It's Monday, Romeo and Juliet Warriors, and I wanted to give you an overview. I'm hoping that you in the screen behind me have read Act One, Act Two, Scenes One and Two. That was Friday afternoon's assignment after the uh, Quiz Friday. Catch up on that because this week and today, Monday's assignments are in the new reading guide, and I have some questions for you just about that famous balcony scene. Romeo and Juliet have stayed up all night. They had a, such a great party, and they kissed, and they flirted, and they're in love. I love at first sight. And after that uh, evening of the party, the balcony scene is the next step. Juliet at that scene proposes marriage right away. Romeo's a little taken aback, but he's going to go for it. And that's where I'm going to pick up my review. Keep this week doing both the No Fear Shakespeare uh, uh, clicks of reading left and right, um, old Shakespeare and modern translations. And I hope it down below, I'll keep feeding you with the tracks that would accompany that so you can be listening as you do your No Fear Shakespeare. I'm going to move over and uh, just show you the original text. I'm not going to use a paraphrase on the side. And I need to tell you what happens after the balcony scene so that you can today read right to scene five. Don't read scenes three and four of act two. In this scene, Romeo is has not gone to bed because he's left Juliet's Capulet Orchard where they would kill him if they found him in there. And he has fallen in love with a Capulet unlike any Montague ever, and he has run now to Friar Lawrence's cell. We haven't met Friar Lawrence until this scene. On this long passage, um, I probably would make you paraphrase it if we were in class together, but we'll skip it. But he does say this important thing, and I have a little aid. He picks up a plant because the guy likes to garden this friar. He lives in a church. He doesn't have any spouse. He's devoted his life to God, and he also gardens while he's at this church and he picks up a flower like I'm holding, and he says these yellow words. He says, within the infant rind of this small flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. You see the yellow words? For this part, maybe like the blossom, for this part being tasted, I'm sorry, being smelt um, with that part of the flower, cheers each part of my body. But being tasted slays all senses with the heart. It'll kill me if I eat it. It's an important concept, and it's one of my objectives for you today in this video, that you understand this idea of medicine and poison coexisting in one place. They're in a plant, and the friar introduces this idea, but they're also in Romeo and Juliet. They have poison of rude will and of impatience and of a little bit of depression and a little bit of defiance that they won't listen to their parents or just be careful because they're poisonously passionate. And Romeo and Juliet, of course, also have, have medicine and beauties in them too. There's virtues and medicine, and it's very healing to see a love story, and they're full of good things too. It's not, an, it's not a difficult concept in the end. All of us have good and evil in us, and it's the metaphor for it is medicine and poison, according to the friar. See, the friar goes on to say, two such opposed kings of medicine and poison and camp them still in man as well as herbs and plants. And he calls them grace. That's medicine, grace and gracefulness and being kind to people. And also po uh, a rude will, pride, and things that drive us to just meet our own passionate needs. That's what he also calls rude will. Um, well, let's see, Romeo walks in right at that moment. Enter Romeo, because we're talking about Romeo with this plan, and then he walks in. So it's all one big scene. Um, and the scene wraps up really quick. It's a short one. Uh, Romeo confesses he's over Rosalind. As we see that Friar uh, learned about Rosalind, and Romeo trusts the Friar and speaks to him uh, about uh, things like his girlfriend. And he agrees to marry him to a Capulet because of this yellow passage here. Come, young waverer, go with me. In one respect, I'll thy assistant be. For in this alliance, this marriage that I will approve to do between you and Juliet, I think it will may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. In other words, he's hoping to turn the hatred of the feud into loving um, reunion with the marriage of the two kids. It's a mistake though, Friar, and this is the beginning of the tragedy, everybody. And in my next video, I'll be doing scene four.